All right, y'all, welcome back to another one. Uh, today we're doing something a little different. We're uh, headed a few hours south here, and uh, we're gonna go explore um, some wilderness ground. So, it'll be fun. Uh, I got the little boat behind me. You probably can't even see it back there. A uh, little bitty boat, sun's coming just up over the trees. We're gonna go spend a couple of days camping, exploring, hunting, just having a good, relaxing time. Uh, it's gonna be fun. So anyway, stick with me all. It's gonna be a good one. All right, y'all, we made it. Made it down here. The, the river is really, really low. Um, you can see there, those are every bit of 20 foot to the, to the banks back behind me. We just haven't had any rain this summer. So anyway, still really pretty. Uh, but boy, this sucker is shallow. So anyway, got the little boat, got the little motor going. And uh, we're gonna try to get up through here I'd like to find a slough or something that I could pull off the main river and, uh, you know, kind of go back up in a slough, maybe go up back in one of them big bluff areas, um, kind of explore, hike around, do some squirrel hunting, stuff like that. Um, it's pretty windy really though, coming right down, it's just funneling through this river area. So I'd like to find somewhere to camp that's off the river. That way, you know, it won't be so windy tonight. So. Anyway, I've got probably 25 miles worth of river here I can run, so we're gonna go up and down and uh, see if we can't find a slough. I don't know if they're gonna be froze up. It was about 17 degrees this morning whenever I woke up and all the little creeks and ditches and stuff, they were all froze up, or at least had skim ice on them uh, whenever, you know, whenever we, uh, I was driving down here. So we'll see. I'm a lot further south, so maybe it didn't get quite as cold. Um, I did bring a few uh, few traps with me here, so I got a I got a beaver set if I see some beaver sign, and I got some coon traps too. Uh, I got some some small footholds as well. So go along here and uh, see if we can't find some sign potentially, and maybe maybe set some traps as well. But regardless of what we do, it's gonna be fun. I'd like to find a camp spot though within the next hour hour and a half. That way I got time to get everything set up, and then maybe uh, maybe go walk around and squirrel hunt there this evening. Oh, it'll be fun, whatever we do. All right, I found a slough here. Uh, it's froze up, but I think it just skim ice. So we're gonna go up and see how far we can get up it. get up it very far <laughs> right there's the main river man it's just it's it's just so been so dry this year that none of these little backwater sloughs or anything got any water in them so i can run this boat in, in not very much water at all so i think i'll just get out and we'll just we'll go walk up there and just have a look maybe grab the 22 in case we see a squirrel or something on the way. Brought a little food, but it sure be nice to have some squirrel for supper. Let's 
go see what we got. At least go walk up there and see oh, what we got. We'll find something. You can tell a lot of this, you can see, is usually all underwater. I mean, I'm 12 foot over the boat right now. Just it's been so dry lately. Beaver Lodge right here. You can see how much water he'd need, but you can see his tunnel. It goes right up into there. That's his house, and he burrows into the bank. But you can see that that tunnel right there where they come in and out. A lot of our beavers around here they don't they don't build actual houses because uh, we don't have enough water. The water fluctuates so much, uh, so they'll they'll build bank dens. They'll burrow inside the bank dens. So, anyway, kind of cool to see. Uh, but man, a lot of uh. They need a lot of water to have beavers. Beavers up in here. There's something else up there. Go look up there. There's something. Something metal and rusty. Part of an old car. There's the leaf springs. Right there. It's an old car. See some of the wiring there. There's an engine block. There's a front end of it. That's the firewall, so the back end's rusted completely out. You know, you come across all this stuff in the woods and it's like, you know, how did this stuff get here? <laughs> you know, I mean, cars, they've really only been around for just over a hundred years. And I mean, look at the size of these trees. I don't know, I just always think it, that's cool, you know, I mean, were they looking at that view with their car? I don't know. It's, it's, I always find that amazing. You find all these old places and you gotta think, this stuff hasn't been around. I mean, stuff like that, like I said, a little over a hundred years. Looks like maybe, maybe there was an old road here. Like that was the end of the road. They drove it off. The old road at one time, old levee road. I mean, who knows? A hundred years ago, you know, the water could have been right there. You just never really, never really know. Wow, well, that's cool. I don't know how the camera will look at. That's that big bluff I could see from the river. That's way up there. That's probably... Uh, that's good. 150, 175 foot bluff up there. All exposed rock. That's cool looking. Uh, it'd be cool to climb to the top of that sucker. I ain't got time for that. Yeah, get get stuff set up, get camp set up. But that's pretty cool. You can see all these big rocks here. All these big rocks they've fallen down from that big bluff. There's this big one right here. Look at the way that tree grew around it. That's way up there though, man. Pretty cool. Don't get to see a lot of that at home. We're a lot flatter. Old rock, so man. Heavily weathered.
Look at that big one out. There's a tree growing right out of the top of it. That's pretty cool. Check that out. That big old face. I was looking at stuff like that and be like, man, if I crawl up there and step on one of those rocks, like, am I going to be the first one to ever put a foot on there? You know, it just looks so, so old every time I could do that. And sometimes you, you do, and then other times you cross over it and there's a gas line or something there, you know. But I don't know. Just kind of cool. It's thick back in here. Look at that big old ash tree. It's a big sucker. A big old ash tree. We don't have any ashes at home anymore. They're all dead. The ash beetle came and it killed them all. I guess maybe it hasn't got got back up in here yet. There's not big stands of ashes either. You know, they're just kind of sprinkled out. At home, they're kind of big stands, and the beetles get in there and they, uh, you know, they take away all the trees. There's another another big tall ash tree. We were talking about that the other day, you know, I've burned, I burn wood for my heat and I think there's going to be a come a time in my life where I'm going to have to quit burning ash. Normally I burn ash and oak and, uh, yeah, I think it's going to come. I think I'll see it in my life where I won't, there won't be any more ash trees. They're all dead. So, oh, some of the weird things you start to look at, but. All right, I think I've wasted enough time, but that was definitely worth the uh, that was definitely worth the walk in here to see that. But I gotta get moving. We gotta get camp set up. That sun is it's going down quick. Found an old deer stand. I don't know if you guys can see, but sucker's been there a while. You can see right there at the ladder. The trees grew about three inches taller since he's put the ladder stand up. In a couple years, it's gonna pull right out of the ladder. Looks like it's starting to grow around the actual stand itself. Somebody hauled this sucker way back in here. I was like looking at them old deer stands, just trying to put together what what somebody was thinking whenever they actually hung the stand, you know. See if I can see what they were seeing, you know. And he must have been looking at that low ground right there. But, you know, why would you not put the stand in that big tree right there? Why would you hang it on that little one? Either way, dude had a pretty, uh, pretty cool... Pretty cool view. Sure doesn't look like it's been used very much though. Alright, my hands are getting cold. It may not look like it, but I don't even think it's above freezing right now. It's chilly. So we're gonna go down and see if we can't find us another another spot to camp. I've messed around here too long. That's pretty cool. So this is some of the stuff I think is cool. You see that big giant bluff way up there. Hmm, 100 plus foot up there at least. And you got this big rock pile here. I mean, it's a big rock pile. And you know that all those rocks, you know, they fell from up there. They got weathered. Obviously that's cool there. You know, that tree's growing out of there. But like, look at this tree. Like, yeah, that's, a, that's a big tree growing right out of the rocks, standing on this giant rock pile. Oh, sometimes I think we all just kind of, this is the stuff you slow down and look. You're like, man, that's kind of cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's one of them deals where it's, 
you can pass by it and you can drive by it, but to actually sit there and think about it, like, you know, that big rock pushed, weathered, dropped all these other little rocks. And that big old tree come growing out of it. Or then you got, you know, a rock like that that's got all those other rocks embedded in it. So that's just kind of cool. Whew, made a bad mistake there. I saw it was up in there. So I ended up walking through that big bluff and then I ended up walking down through here and I just came out through the, the tall grass here back down to the boat. And, and I tell you, I am covered <laughs> in them little sticker seats. I'm going to be picking them out of my shirt for hours. I got them all over my pants and everywhere. You know, those of you who don't know, that the reason these seeds do that, you see like these here, they've got two little prongs on them. And, uh, you know, that, that's what they've been engineered by nature to do, is that they, they cling on to critters as they walk through, you know. Uh, deer and all the other small games and stuff. And then that's how they get dispersed. It's, uh, you know, the grab onto the fur and they'll fall off and then that's a way of dispersing you know rather than relying on you know like a fruit tree on the other hand you know it, it's relying on something eating it and then digesting the the seed and it, you know spreading the seed that way but yeah i'm gonna be picking them suckers out of my shirt for the rest of the day a little boat though. I didn't figure everything would be this low. Alright, let's go up river. There's beaver somewhere in this river. See right there. That's pretty that's a pretty fresh chewed stick. Not super super fresh but it had to have come from up river so Maybe we'll get lucky and find the den or see some better sign whenever we go up there. Put a trap out for him tonight. Getting really shallow, like really shallow. Shallower than uh, I can run even with the motor tilted up here. Um, so I just jumped out, cut a couple of different size sticks here and uh, We'll stick that under the motor and that'll get us up even further. We just gotta get through that stretch right there. So we'll make her work. Alright y'all. I have been I have been running up and down this river for the last two hours trying to find a decent camp spot and uh not having a lot of success but i think i finally found what i'm gonna do so anyway we got the boat right there got this uh this big sandbar i was actually gonna camp right here on this sandbar because it was the flattest area i could find um it's just we had rain there a couple days ago and so all the sand's just wet but it was gonna work and then i decided to come up the hill I saw a little open area so decided to come up the hill it's a good ways away from the boat but I think I can make it about four trips with all my stuff um, bringing the tent right now bring you guys along I think it'll uh, I think it'll do there's a bunch of deer using it so they're coming down to the 
river there. I gotta get rid of them cock rivers. Every time I walk by them, I get them. But anyway, there you go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Nice kind of big plateau area. I'll clean out, clean out an area right there. I think we finally found it. it took a lot longer than I thought it would, so still want to go hunting a little bit and I still want to I still gotta get firewood so firewood I can get pretty quick I think right down there um but yeah I think this is this is gonna be home for the night the view is like epic that means <laughs> so I got the big cliffs in the background there there's a boat down there and that's a pretty good oak thicket right there there's a lot of oaks in there Whenever I first pulled the boat up, I uh, I heard a couple of squirrels barking it. So if I can get this camp set up here quick enough, uh, I'll go across the river there and uh, maybe do a little hunting. All right, so I got everything brought up here. It may look like a lot, but you know what? If you can be comfortable, be comfortable. So you know, I didn't know what the grass was going to be like, so I did bring this. Uh, this little weed cutter. I really like this stuff, thing for this kind of stuff. Um, you know, you can just throw it in your boat, and you know, if you need an area to clear out, you can do it real quick. So, anyway, I'm not sure if I've ever tried it on this type of weeds, uh, but we'll give it a go. I'm gonna try to make a little area for my tent. I think. If not, I'll just pile it up. It's not that big of a deal. And then I definitely want to clear out uh, a good little ring around for. Uh, for my fire pit there tonight. I want to have an outside fire. So. I'd like to have the inside of the tent because I'm going to put a wood stove in here because it's going to get cold tonight. Being by here by this river too, it's going to be real cold. So anyway, we'll hack around. There we go. I'll tell you what, y'all ever have like, like I'm out here in the middle of nowhere and I could be as loud as I want, but you ever get that like, it's so quiet you don't want to make noise to disrupt it? It's kind of where I'm at out here. It's just so quiet. All right, so there's my big ring right there. Um, I got a teepee that I'm gonna set up here. So, need a circle. Uh, that didn't take a couple minutes and uh, pulled it all back. And then tomorrow, whenever I leave, I can just kind of fold all that back. Never know I was here. It's all set up. I also bring this piece of, uh, it's underlayment for flooring is what this is. It just makes it nice where you're not laying on the ground. Um, obviously I'm not gonna put it where the stove is, but uh, it's just nice and it doesn't take up really any room. So put that in there, get the stove together, you could go. My sleeping bag together. Put the wood stove together quick. It's just a real cheap stainless steel camping stove here. These are all so much fun. I feel like if you come in a boat, you've got to bring like everything. It's just a requirement. Can't forget your pillow. That underlayment's nice because 
like I said, I've got it cut to fit that entire TP in the summertime. Um, obviously, I don't want it underneath the stove here in the uh, in the winter. But nonetheless, it works really good. Do I have my slippers? We about got camp set up, y'all. All right, that didn't take too long. All right, well, that warmed me up. It's gonna get cool tonight though, but yeah. I'll show you guys around camp. That didn't take too awful long. Um, show you guys the teepee first. So this is just like a two man teepee or whatever. I think it's like 12 foot wide. Uh, it's enough room for like one and a half people really, or one person all the stuff. Um, but for something like this, it works great. So I like the teepee. Everybody complains about a floor. Um, not having a floor that's why I bring the, the underlayment and it doesn't matter you know the floor whenever you're camping it's a pain pain anyway so anyway I'll show you guys what I got um, so I got my sleep inside there I got a cheap air mattress and a, uh, a pretty light uh, sleeping bag really but it's gonna be warm in here with the stove um, so and I'm way up off the ground with the air mattress, so should be pretty comfortable. Got my slippers. I got some, uh, I got some down pants and a, a nice down coat to sit by the fire with in that bag there. Just a little heavier gear. We got our little stove there. Uh, just a little cheap, cheap camping stove, nothing special. And uh, up through the top there with the stove jack. And like I said, I'll be able to put my stuff um, in here, like my backpack and my rifle cases and stuff that I don't want to get. Uh, all frosted on because it's gonna frost real heavy tonight being by this river so I can put that stuff over there and uh, got plenty of room for, for everything else so we'll just zip that up and then come over here so I got the rest of my stuff like I said hauled up three trips worth into that of the totes out of the boat um, so we got that and then this is where we're gonna do our our outside fire there um, got that nice and cleared off we'll We'll get some firewood here in a second, but a little, little camp chair. I got all my food making stuff in that cooler, so whenever we get back, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, prep our meal, but I don't know what time it is. I think I've got probably an hour or so. Yeah, I've got about an hour before dark, so we're going we're gonna to go across the river there into that oak thicket and uh, see if we can't get us a squirrel or two. Uh, before it gets dark and then on my way down it rains so it's wet but all the all the dead wood with the river being so low i'll uh, i'll cut some firewood on the way back i brought my little battery powered chainsaw so it shouldn't take too awful long you can see there's some current to the river i've came down several miles uh it's kind of got narrower but anyway just having some uh some jerky here, a little deer jerky. But I just want to go right over there in that oak thicket. So I think I'll just I'll just paddle across instead of firing up the motor. Crawl up that bank. I'll just skull over. I used to crappie fish like this all the time. But if you take your hand and just make a figure eight. It's called Skullin. They actually used to make Skullin paddles. You can't find them anymore, but they're real short little paddles. But if you just figure eight like that, you can propel yourself real, real efficient. Real, real efficient and super quiet. My first boat, I didn't have money for a trolling motor. I sculled that boat hundreds and hundreds of miles. Had a cinder block in the back of the boat to, to weigh it down. It didn't have a motor on it. I sculled that boat so far, catching crappie. But you can see how fast I'm going right now. And all I'm doing is just figure eighting. Just like that. That's all you gotta do. And you can make some real quick time. So, like I said, 
We're already across the river. There's my camp up there. We're already across the river though. Coming in hot. This bank still froze because this is the this is the south side. So it didn't catch no sun today. So this bank still froze. That bank's thawed. Anyway, let's get out of here. Get up there and try to shoot squirrel. I gave it about 40 minutes. It's getting cold quick, man. My hands are freezing. But uh, anyway, it's just so loud in the woods uh, with all them leaves in there. And there's no wind. It's dead calm. So I don't know. I need to, tomorrow morning, I'm going to go in there, bring my call, sit there, try to see them, and then walk up to them. I think that's the best way to do it. It's what I actually did with this one. I actually just mouth squeak, you know, and he, he answered back, and that's that's how I got him. So anyway, just got the one, but uh, well, if you're only gonna get one, you might as well get that one because that's a huge fox squirrel. So that's a meal in itself. Um, so anyway, it's getting dark, getting dark in a hurry. Um, you get some firewood. So that's a little battery powered chainsaw. We're cheating. <laughs> We're gonna come up here on this bank. Get a bunch of firewood, dry firewood, haul it up. There's more over here than there is over there, but anyway, we'll come up with some firewood here pretty quick. All right, so got a nice little, got a nice little pile of firewood in front of the boat there. Nothing, nothing crazy, but I'm only here for one night, so that'll do me a good outside fire, and then a the little stuff I can take inside for the tent stove. Uh, plus that's about all I want to pack up that hill over there Yeah, big hill anyway before it gets dark. I got a couple a uh, couple of dog proofs These are dog proof uh, Style traps that are basically targeting coons and skunks and possums things like that um, And you put the bait in them. They're a cylinder trap. I'll show you We're gonna go set a couple over here just because I can like I said, ideally I would have had better locations, but we're gonna put them right on the edge of the riverbank and uh, see what, see what's what. Um, I'm not sure. Like I said, the sign's not really good, but then again, this bank is froze, so it may uh, may not be leaving a lot of sign actually. But I can see some old tracks in here. Obviously there's tracks all up and down. There should be a high bank trail up there, but I just couldn't find it. Um, so we're gonna come down here and tie off and maybe have a cocoon in the morning. Be kind of cool. All right, so I don't know if you can see all those. Those are all coon tracks. It's a lot of them too. It's not super fresh, but it means they're here and they're working. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a set. So these coons will run the banks and uh and that's what you're looking for i mean we just haven't had any any weather to, to wash all this out and get fresh sign but there's definitely sign here so if you can see see all the tracks right there where they're coming right to the water's edge so this is about as good a spot as any all right so if you're unfamiliar this is a this is a duke dog proof um, and 
basically the, the way it works is there's a little trigger in there, put bait down in there and he reaches hand up, hand down in there, pulls the trigger. He's sitting there restrained waiting for you. It doesn't hurt him. He's just, he's just restrained. I mean, I can, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can put my hand in that trap right there and that's, that's all it is. It's just, just a restraining device. So, uh, anyway, I put one in here. I've got these cables. These are my, actually my own cables, um, that I make and, and sell. But we're just going to take this log right here that you guys are sitting on. And, uh, this cable, it's just got a, got a noose on it. It just won't let that, that cable move. And uh, we're going to put it right right here at the water's edge. I always like to put it right at the water's edge. Uh, you want to be right where the critters are at. So we're going to stick it right down in that, in that mud there. And, uh, and take some, some bait. So this is just dog food with some sweet stuff added to it. That's all it is. And put down in that, that trap there. And... Uh, and that's that's what it looks like right there so like i said cabled off to this that sucker can't go nowhere can't work free of that so hopefully whenever we wake up in the morning we'll be able to come down here and see one bouncing that'd be kind of cool so all right i'm gonna put one more in here somewhere Took five trips to get up that hill, but I got a proper stack of firewood now, so that's awesome. I think I'll, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get a fire going, get some coals made for supper, and then I'm gonna take that end right there. That's all the little stuff. I consolidate it, break it down, and then uh, put it inside the. Uh, the tent. I gotta get some of my other stuff inside too. There's already dew starting. So form on some of the, some of the other stuff. So this is what we got. I got my light. Gotta do something with our squirrel. This is a little uh, T1000 uh, power station. Uh, the grease cell is who makes it. Um, and they sent it to me. I've been using the heck out of it for the last about 10 months uh i i've i've taken this thing you can see it's it's got it's got a little wear and tear i i've really drug this thing around and uh it's pretty nice coming out here maybe not so much but for me having to have camera batteries and all the other stuff it's it's pretty nice pretty lightweight so anyway you guys are in the market for a a power station uh i can attest this one's this one's done very well you can also hook it up to solar i don't have that option right now but anyway there we go. I'm gonna get my firewood taken care of, and then uh, we'll get a. I think we got a fire started here real quick. That way we can get a better coals for, for supper. Still gotta clean that squirrel. All right. So whenever it comes to fire building, I don't really geek out on it too awful much. Like I said, I I burn firewood for six months out of the year. So to me, it's just building another fire. You know, what I will say is your fire starter is. Uh, is obviously pretty important so anyway what i got here this is uh these are makeup pads like your wife or girlfriend would use to, to remove her makeup or whatever um and then i've i've actually dipped those in uh in rendered down coon fat um so that is like i actually burn the fat of the coons um in my fur shed uh, for heat this stuff will burn like oil so once you get it lit you've got a good 15 20 minutes with that one little disc there so i just keep a bunch of them handy and uh that's about the best way i've found um like i said all natural you got a cotton thing and and pure fat but like i said you can really you can really geek out on it if you want but to me uh like I said, it's not that that big of a deal. I try to leave just a little bit there. You can see of the cotton. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get that, that fat going. But if you leave just a little piece of that cotton exposed, that cotton burns 
real easy and then it'll catch the uh, the fat on fire but you can see that's I mean it's it was that quick it's not gonna go out and uh, you know it's pretty forgiving as far as like I said I got a little nest underneath and then you can pretty much just pile the wood on top of it and uh, and you'll have a fire there so you can see where I cleared all this out I don't know if you guys can see in the in my headlight but it's it's so moist that the, it's already frozen uh, the frost is coming out so it's gonna get chilly it's cold right now I almost worked up a sweat coming up that hill but it won't last give a sucker about 10 15 minutes and uh, we'll have a we'll have a good bed of coal we'll start cooking on so so we'll go ahead and clean our squirrel here We'll rinse them off. Break that back leg. There's two chunks of meat. That may not look like much, but once you get it all all fried up there, there's there's a good little little bit of meat there. Um, you'll want it eat it on the bone. I, I always try to eat it on the bone because if you try to if you try to cut it off the bone you, you end up wasting a lot. There we go. There's front shoulder. There's pretty good little bit of meat there too. Alright there's our squirrel meat. We'll set that to the side there. I've also got some uh, I got onion in here and I've got some uh, new potatoes out of, the, out of the garden yet and then uh, I've also got a, a little piece of piece of deer so I think we'll uh, we'll take about half of that too and, and we'll fry that up I got a little seasoning here and uh, I think we'll do the uh, we'll do the back strap just fried and then we'll uh, do some potatoes and the squirrel. I got a little chicken broth here. I think we'll, we'll do that squirrel and the potatoes and the onions and that chicken broth. That'd make a nice little, nice little kind of a soup to eat. But I had to build a, another fire separate from my, my cooking fire there. I'm telling you, it's chilly out here tonight. Man, I do love onions. All right. Obviously, for all you hygiene people, well, I don't care about you, and this is all for me, so screw you. But there we go. There's our plate of veggies. A little dusting on there. Season those up. I believe our deer is done. A little chicken broth in our pan here. We're gonna boil them potatoes and onions in there and right in there in that chicken broth and then with the squirrel we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna throw it in there so we're gonna kind of boil it you know squirrel it there's no fat on that meat at all so we'll throw that in there and just let that chicken broth just work at it it'll be It'd be dang good eating there. Got just enough chicken broth in there to kind of, kind of cover everything. And like I said, we'll get that to kind of a simmering boil or whatever we got. And uh, let it sit there for a good minute. Give this old deer a taste. That's some, some good eating. 
That's just how you want her too. Took her out of the pot, put her onto the plate here. Well, that looks good, doesn't it? That squirrel, it's kind of pulled its way back from the bone. It's completely done, so I mean, that's a good flavor. Like I said, squirrel in general is kind of chewy, but just because there's no fat on it, I'm gonna devour this plate of food here. I got hungry. I walked up that hill a lot today. I didn't have nothing to eat pretty much all day. A few pieces of jerky, so I went down this plate. Got the big full moon coming up in the back. There's coyotes all over here howling. Can you guys see the moon? Big, bright, full moon, man. Clear as a bell. Got the old fire. Everything cleaned up. Got all my dishes and pans and everything cleaned up there. Just stacked the old fire back up, got it rolling. Oh man, I downed all that food. <laughs> That's some good food. That's some good food, man. It feels like it's midnight, but it that's just because it's been dark for like three hours. But man, what a meal. That was that was great. It's chilly, you get away from that fire. But I'm not ready for bed. So anyway. Got me a little adult beverage here. I hauled in here. I'm gonna sip on it. Oh, that's chilly. <sighs> Tastes good though. Yep, yeah, let's sit here by the fire and Watch the stars, maybe do a little whittling. But yeah, I'm gonna let this fire burn up a little bit, watch it for a bit, and then, like I said, I got my bed all made up. Um, and then about a half hour before I go to bed, there's no point in me burning uh, a bunch of wood in that stove unless I'm in there, because I mean, it's a tent, right? It's not gonna hold the heat for that long, but uh, a little before bed, I. About a half hour before I go to bed, I'll take some coals from this fire and I already got a little bed made in there in that stove and we'll kick that stove up and that tent's all frosted up on the inside because of the, you know, the moisture coming out of the ground that it's sitting on. Uh, so we'll burn all that off. That won't take long to heat that little tent up and then we'll have a, have a nice place to go to bed. But anyway, I think I'm gonna sit here and do some whittling enjoy the evening it's quiet tonight and i like that you know these little lightweight camping stoves they they'll heat but they're just not efficient um you know they they just leak so much that they're really not controllable um you know you can basically only control them kind of by the the type of wood you put in them so you know little sticks burn up real quick give you a bunch of heat the bigger chunks of wood you could see there um, those are kind of your longer burning stuff but in reality you're only gonna get a couple hours max out of burning it so anyway my little setup here like I said you guys see I got the big the big air mattress there that's got me like four or five inches off the ground if you can get yourself off the ground um, that's a huge deal, you know, to not not get cold at least. Um, you know, uh, obviously sleeping bags, you can spend a ton of money on big sleeping bags. You know, to pack in a sleeping bag that would keep you warm uh, without a bunch of clothes on, you're talking about a giant sleeping bag. So really the best thing i found is um, I buy these, these are just down ski pants. I've got just a lightweight down hunting jacket on. I've got a bigger one here in my pack that I probably won't even use tonight, but I got it just in case. Um, my sleeping bag is just a, a very cheap sleeping bag. It's a mummy bag, so it's kind of going to keep keep the heat in, um, but it's not providing near the insulation that this down clothing that I have on uh, will. I've got a, a little fire in there right now. Um, like I said, I'll throw throw one more on here right before I go to sleep. And uh, you know that'll give me that'll give me a couple hours. If not, you're getting up every couple hours feeding the fire, and you know it's, it's still kind of a pain. Uh, I, you know it's gonna be cold in here whenever I wake up, but I'm gonna sleep comfortable. All right.
I'm tired. We're going to get up. Morning. Do it all over again. See you guys in the morning. <sighs> morning. Oh. Well, alarm just went off. Shooting lights in about uh, 10 minutes or so. We're going to get out of the bag. I think we're going to make us a little warm warm tea or something. I don't know. I brought some uh, dehydrated apples. So, slept pretty good. Woke up a few times. It's, it's windy outside. I ended up having to put my big jacket on. About one o'clock I woke up once that wind switched. But other than that, slept pretty good. So, can get boots on and get outside and see what else we can do today. Let those apples boil there for about five minutes in that water. They rehydrated. I think I'll give them a few minutes and uh, go get into my hunting clothes and we'll come out and see. At least I'll have some hot apples if nothing else. It smells good. It smells real good. Give our apple water. Little try here. Oh. Oh. It's still plenty hot, but it tastes like a watered down apple. It's good though, it's cold. Everything's iced up this morning. It's all frosty. There's ice all down by the river. <sighs> that is good though. I'll tell you what, if you had like some cinnamon or something to put in there, mix it in, that'd be a really good, really good warm drink. Oh, that's good. We'll let that sit there and cool off a little bit. The moon's still up in the sky. I think while we're waiting on that cool off, uh, let's go down and check that trap that we got set down there. Still can't beat the view though. There's a deer that just deer that just ran off right there. Good find a deer. Yep. Nothing touch our traps. First deer I've seen. Doesn't look like anything. Anything hit across the river either. We'll go check those out in a bit. But this one's untouched right there. So we'll go ahead and pull that. Like I said, I'm gonna leave here this afternoon, but. I didn't have a whole lot of high hopes. I just didn't see a lot of sign. Um, but yeah. Nonetheless, we'll pull that trap and uh, go across the river. I kind of been waiting for it to get daylight enough where I can see, you know, through the scope. So we're gonna go do some exploring, some hiking, and uh, oh, see what the day brings. Do a lot of walking around. Maybe a little hunting. It's gonna be fun. Grab something to drink here. Before the road. <laughs> Got me something to drink. Got my dehydrated apples. Got some jerky in my backpack. For breakfast I'll head on down the river here it's nice now because it's all froze up now the last night the river's really low but it is kind of cool flowing like that 
looks cool. Yeah, it's nice because everything froze up. Yesterday it was all, all mucky, but now it's solid. Makes for easy walking. Makes it nice. morning with the frost so I'm able to sneak around a little bit better the crowd's just not near as not near as loud there we go nice gray here we go really nice gray real nice gray squirrel there right at the base of the head good looking squirrel all right, we'll get him in the pack and we need four more. So I've been walking around now for, I don't know, hour, hour and a half or so. I got down in this slough here. Um, it's, it's all froze up from last night. There's a little bit of water down there. It's all froze up, but you can tell at one time there was water in here, but you know, we're going on two years now of pretty, pretty severe drought but anyway I thought it was cool there's that big bluff right there that's the one that you can see from camp camps over there about a mile or so anyway that's that big bluff there I'm gonna follow this little slough around maybe I can find a way it'd be neat to get up to the top of that that may be this afternoon's hike is find a way up to the top of that and look down. I think that'd be that'd be pretty cool. So anyway, got the one squirrel not seeing a lot. A lot of a lot of country here, but not a lot of not a lot of game in it. But scenery makes up for it. We're gonna keep walking around. Still need to find some good oaks. I, I haven't, need, I haven't found the good oaks or the walnuts or the hickory stands like we have back at home. If I could find those, I think that's where the squirrels be concentrated. But either way, very cool little view there. If you look over there, just right over there, you can see that big eagle's nest in the tree. He was he was sitting in it. He just flew off. The big old bald eagle. Kind of cool. That's kind of cool. It's a big tree too. All right, y'all. Well, we tried. <laughs> I found the best looking spot. I was just way down over there. You can see I've come up basically that far. Um, I'm not sure how far, but long ways I climbed up. I thought this was the best way to get up on this bluff. Just give it a go. And, uh, well, I got to a point where I can't go no more. That's what I'm dealing with right there. I mean, the top is just right there. I got really, really close. Um, either way, though, pretty dang cool view regardless if I made it to the top or not but anyway just couldn't quite make it I mean maybe if I didn't have a backpack and carrying this rifle and a little bit more motivated potentially but uh, I'm not that worried about it it's pretty cool anyway come up a long ways so anyway I think I'm gonna head back down to the river there and uh, head back to camp I think it's, I don't know what, about 10.30 or so right now. So I'm wandering around for a little while. And by the time I get there, it'll be after 11. Probably cook up a little lunch there, something quick and easy. And then maybe go take another little hike or walk around or something before I head home. But anyway, pretty dang cool.
This is pretty cool. These are one of the spots like you see and you're kind of like, ah, I may be the first one to step foot here. Like this is, this is pretty cool. So. kind of cool. What's the chances of the tree falling just perfect on that rock and what's the chance of that rock standing up like that? It's wild. But we were way up there a second ago. Still going down. All these big giant rocks here you can see. They obviously, you know, they fell off of that face over time. So, oh, some big rocks, man. Some big rocks. Like, I can only imagine what it'd be like to see one of them suckers fall out, just tear down through here. Be nuts. There is a lot of beaver sign in here. Like, you can tell where I'm at. At one time it gets, or had, gets, I don't know. There's, a, there's some water here for sure. Um, you know, which like I said, you could see that that river would be 20 plus feet high. But I mean, all over in here, there's beaver chewed sticks. And then I keep coming across these trees like this. All over, you can see that one right there, this one right here. But the thing is, you can see this is where a beaver, this is where a beaver chewed on it. So, either the water was that high for that long, or that's where he chewed on it, which, you know, is another four feet up. That's beaver chewing. That's beaver chewing. You know, and you can see that that was all beaver chewed, but then the tree healed itself. So, I don't know. Very interesting. There's definitely nothing really fresh. I saw one fresh stick yesterday, but I covered several miles and didn't see anything. So I don't know. Deer scrape right there. It's not fresh, but there's some life down in here, but it's just there ain't a bunch of it. I don't know. It's very interesting coming to a new place like this. All right, so made it back to camp here, and uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I just looked. It, that was not quite six miles. It's a little over five and a half miles I walked this morning. That's a long way through the timber. Anyway, it was fun, but I'm hungry. I don't want to wait to build a fire and get the coals nice, so just using my little camp stove here. To show you guys. Just using my little little camp stove here um, heating up some water gonna boil some water I'm just gonna do um, just some chicken ramen here I don't know why but it just sounds good and uh, I've got the other little bit of that deer left over I, I'm gonna save the squirrel for uh, we may go hunt again this afternoon and if not I'll, I'll clean it whenever I get home but I want something right now I'm hungry so I'm gonna cut this up eat it, have my ramen, it's gonna be a good lunch. I just sit here and just watch the river for a little bit. It's really nice, the sun right here. I got probably another hour or so of the sun just facing right here. Got a little chilly last night, so it's real nice to be in the sun. So. Anyway, that's what we're doing for lunch. As soon as my water boils here in just a second, we'll uh, throw them noodles in there and then we'll Get this stuff going.
My goodness, y'all, that was a lot of food and I ate it all. <laughs> I was hungry. That was very good though. That was very good. So anyway, just doing the dishes here. You know, I've kind of gone over the last couple of years, it used to be just paper plates for everything, right? And you'd throw them in the fire, but you know, you're all frying stuff and paper plates get soggy and everything else. So I just, I've got these cheap plastic plates and uh, man, they're just as easy to bring a couple of paper towels, wipe them off and you can burn the paper towel, but at least you got something sturdy to, you know, at least eat on. That's the problem with paper plates, if you don't have a backing, a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain so anyway man that was good finish her off here I got a little chocolate bar for dessert that's pretty nice this worked out pretty well the hill could have been a little smaller I had to climb up but other than that I'm very happy with how everything turned out so I don't even know what time it is like I said, it gets dark at 4.30, so. It's almost 12.30 right now, so. I think I'll probably just sit here for about another 15 minutes or so and enjoy the world as it flows by, and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and break camp down and uh, start making my way back up, back up river there. Uh, just working slowly. There's a couple other bluffs that I saw I may wanna go hike up or I saw one little patch of trees. If it's the right time, I may go walk through again and try for another squirrel. But like I said, just no agenda whatsoever. But I think I'll I'll get camp packed up and that way that's done. And I'm not rushed to do that and then slowly start making my way. But all in all, it's been a fun couple of days. I really enjoyed it. Just like that, we're packed up. So I think I'll come back. I like this area. Let me come back and do some more exploring. Maybe right whenever the river's up a little bit more, I can navigate a little bit better. So, anyway, there we go. A little pile of firewood for next time or somebody else that wants to use it. But anyway, I'm cleaned up, loaded up, fire's doused. Put my last of my water on it. So, anyway. I'm gonna get headed back up river. This sure was fun. So, anyway, still can't beat the view. Pretty cool. All right, so got the truck loaded back up, both back there, everything strapped down. I'm gonna start making my way back home. Really want to thank you guys for tuning in to this one. Uh, this was a fun video to make. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, though, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know in some way that, that you enjoyed these types of videos. So if you're not, consider subscribing, too. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to make my way back home. Had an awesome time. You know, this was one of the trips that it was super fun to not have an agenda. And I think that's what made it so fun. Uh, we got a lot of little things done and did a bunch of cool little stuff. And I, like I said, I think that's what made it fun was that there was no, no agenda. I didn't really have any goals going into it and it was just a super relaxing trip. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed as always appreciate the view. See you on the next one.